Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on creating a simple PHP strategy game. In this part I'm going to be talking about databases which will hold all the information for the players in our game. So what I'm going to show you right now is the PHP my admin that you can find if you go to localhost you'll see your index page here the tools right here PHP my admin you'll click on that and you'll see something like this now what this is is this is basically the control panel for your database and you can create databases make tables delete tables edit information things like that so what we're going to do is first create our database and for simple sakes we'll just call it game so you have game coalition I just stick with just coalition there's a whole bunch of types of databases but sticking with coalition for right now is the easiest one so once you click create you'll see up here database game has been created if there was an error it probably would have shown it so what we're going to do now is create tables within our database to hold information so what I'm going to do is just create a simple table we'll just call it user we'll be using this for a registration uh, in the next part what we need to figure out is the number of fields that we're going to need obviously we can update this and change it when we need to but for right now we'll start off with basics we want the user to have an ID then we also want to store their username their password and their email just to start off with so ID username password email that's four fields so we throw four in there and you'll come up with something like this now right here is the field what you want it to be called so for example we have our ID Oopsie. the type can be anything from an integer to var varchar which is basically text uh, you have text which is long strings like paragraphs of information and then you have other miscellaneous things here and there for ID we want it to be a number so you can do that length or values is just how big you want the integer to be um, currently if we leave it as is right here um, it will give it an integer of size 10 which if it's unsigned will be four billion two hundred ninety four million nine hundred sixty seven two hundred ninety five would be the highest don't ask me how I know that just years of seeing that number I don't think you're gonna have four billion players um, hey if you did tell me how you did it <laughs> but we'll just leave that as is right now because again it's a it's a huge number and may not be reachable so we want the ID to be the primary index what what that means is that right here we have index and we want it to be primary what that means is that when you're searching through the database <clears throat> it will take ID to be the primary search tool what it's looking for while it goes through things obviously we can have certain conditions and things like that that can change but if we're just returning results from a database you'll you'll see that ID is the best primary index now AI right here a underscore I stands for auto increment and this means that if it's checked whenever we whenever we add a user to our database the ID will increment if we leave this unchecked the ID will stay the same and you'll get a whole bunch of users with the same ID so we don't want that um, other things like attributes you can see unsigned if you leave attributes blank you'll have a signed integer 
which just means that the highest it can go is roughly 2.1 billion. For for signed integers, you can have positive or negative. Obviously, those are signs. So you can have down to negative 2.1 billion and up to positive 2.1 billion. For unsigned, you can only have positive. So it starts at zero and goes to the 4.2, 4.3 billion. So that's that. And now we want to have the username, password, and the email. For username, we'll choose var varchar or varchar, I don't know, however you want to say it. Point is, it's a string. We want to figure out how long we want the username to be. For this, we can just do a simple 20 characters. That seems like a decent amount. For password, due to uh, encryption methods that we'll be using, we need to make it a length of 32. Now, a user can have a, a password of, you know, one character or up to 50 characters, but when we go through our encryption to make to make things to make sure that things are safe, the generated the generated string that will come out of that will be 32 characters long. So that's that. For email, we'll just do 100 characters seems good enough. It really depends on how long the email address is. I don't think I've ever seen an email address longer than 100 characters, but that's good enough right now. So then what we do is we click the save button right here. And it'll say table game dot user has been created. And now you can see the structure. We have the ID, username, password, and email. If we try to browse it, there's nothing there. We turned an empty result, zero rows. So what we need to do now is connect to our database. So if we go and open up, we can just say our test PHP. There are two functions that we need to use in order to access our database and figure out which one we need to use. So the first function is MySQL connect. Yeah, MySQL connect. And you'll see here you need a server, a username, and a password. So the server will generally be localhost unless you're trying to connect to an external server, but that's that. Then you need to have your username, and with WAMP server, you'll have a username of root and a password that is blank. For web hosting, you'll probably have the username and password you signed up with, or a certain user username and database password that you created with the MySQL database. So we have this, and then we do mysql select db which is database and to use this we select our database name which here was game so we do game here and that is that so now we've connected to mysql server and we've selected our database game. So if we refresh the page we don't have any errors. So that's a good thing. That means that we've connected to our database successfully. Now for this game there are going to be a few things that we're going to use on our MySQL database. These are PHP functions that will work with our MySQL database. They are insert, select, and update are the main ones then you'll also have delete, which we won't use that much, but it's always a possibility. Sorry, just uh, email. Okay. So what we're going to do is, if we go here, and we can see that there's right here no records for our user table. What we're going to do is 
we'll just say my school query because we're whoopsie sorry I cannot spell today we're essentially saying okay do this on the MySQL database so we have let's insert something insert into user that's our that's the table name that we want to insert into then here you list off any of the fields that you want to insert data into so let's just say username and we'll just say email so once you have all the fields in that set of parentheses then you say values and let's see you have your parentheses here and you want to do this so let's just say I don't know copophobia because I'm kinda cool that will be our username and our email will be one two three just for now now what you want to do after this ending parentheses here is you want to add or die my school whoopsie error this way if there's an issue with this query it'll die and it'll print out a message so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our game we're gonna refresh there was no error so we can continue on if we go back to game you'll see we have a record now if you click here that says browse we see that now we have our ID our username and our email there is no password because we didn't specify a password to be entered so now what we're going to do is now that we have that we're going to say let's just call this variable SQL and we're going to use a query that says select asterisk asterisk means everything from user now this is every single record in the user table if we wanted to let's say I don't know if we wanted to just specify a condition we'll use where and the where clause is just basically anything on that table that can be done so if we want where username is equal to copophobia and then you have or die mysql error and if we go over to test nothing there however if we try to do one two three it still gives us no error but there is nothing returned so if we echo out mysql numrows of that SQL variable MySQL numrows prints out the number of rows returned from a query in this case one because there's only one row that has username copophobia within user to get the data that we wanted to you have to do you have to do some variable so we'll say user is equal to MySQL fetch Soch. and as it says here fetch a result row as an associative array so then we have our query here as the parameter refresh the page and you'll see that I'm almost out of time so I'll just say echo user and in here we have whatever fields it is so username if we echo username copophobia should print out there so there we have it those are some of the basics of MySQL databases I'll get into the more advanced ones in our next tutorial where we talk about registration see you in the next video